Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 9, lesson 1, Congruence and Transformations. After this lesson, you need to be able to use a composition of transformations, as well as the orientations of figures, to determine if two figures are congruent. Let's learn. Congruence and Transformations. Translations, reflections, and rotations preserve the shape and size of a figure. Consider the following sequence of transformations. We start with a parallelogram. If we rotate the parallelogram, the size and the shape are still the same as it was. If we translate the parallelogram, the size and the shape remain the same. The side lengths remain the same, the angles remain the same. So translating, rotating, or even if we had shown a reflection here, they will not change the size or the shape. This is what we call congruent. The size and the shape do not change. When a transformation is applied to a figure, and then another transformation is applied to that image, the result is a composition of transformations, or a sequence of transformations. On the graph here, we can see our original pre-image. Remember, it does not have those apostrophe prime symbols. First, it was reflected across the y-axis to create our image. Then it was rotated 90 degrees clockwise to produce a second image. We can see that this is the order that it goes based on the number of apostrophe symbols. Here it has two apostrophe symbols, which is read as double prime to indicate that a second transformation had happened. If we did something again, we might see three primes or a triple prime to indicate that three transformations have happened. Through these sequences of transformations, we can show that two figures are congruent if we can get the second image by doing a sequence of rotations or translations or reflections from our pre-image. Since a sequence of translations, reflections, and or rotations do not change the size and shape of a figure, the image and the pre-image then are congruent. So this would mean that the line segments in the pre-image have the same length as the line segments in the image as well as the angles in the image would be the same as they were in the pre-image. Take time to pause and reflect. How are the terms congruent and composition of transformations related? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Let's learn congruence and transformations. This shows that you can use transformations to determine if triangle DEF is congruent to triangle HGI. To do this, we're going to need to come up with a sequence of transformations to see if we can map our pre-image onto our image. Here, if we're doing it, our first step might be to take our image, which we're starting up here, like the one without our prime symbols. Let's rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So I'm going to rotate it down to the right so it looks like my picture shown here with D prime, E prime, F prime. I'm doing this first so I can kind of get it more positioned the same way. I'm trying to get closer and closer each time. Next, if I reflect that image over the y-axis, I can get a second image as indicated by my double prime symbols. Now it looks like I at least have the same shape. It's in the same positioning. Can I get it to map onto this? So what I would need to do is translate it one over and six units down. If I do that, my final image ends up being the exact same size, the same shape as my pre-image. So this would mean that the triangles are congruent because triangle DEF can be mapped exactly onto triangle HGI using a rotation, a reflection, and a translation. Now, it does not have to use all three of them. Any combination of those will work to show that it is congruent. Example one, are the figures congruent? If so, describe a sequence of transformations that maps triangle ABC onto triangle XYZ. If not, explain why they are not congruent. So we need to figure out how to get this over on top of this. So to do so, let's use some transformations. First, let's reflect this across the y-axis. C was two units away, so now it's going to be two units away here for C prime. B was five units away, so B prime, five units on the other side. A directly below that, five away, five away. So that would be my first image. Now I have relatively the same positioning or orientation. Can I get 
this triangle that I just created to map exactly on to the triangle that is shown. Yes, I can do it by moving it one, two, three, four units up. Just have to move it up four, everything up four, and they are in the correct spot. And since that can be mapped exactly from one to the other using those transformations, these triangles are congruent. So what was our sequence of transformations? First, we reflected across the y-axis, followed by a translation four units up. Check your understanding. Using the picture, determine if the two figures are congruent. Then describe a sequence of transformations that will map A onto B, if it's possible. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, yes, they are congruent. And for B, one possible way that we could do, there are probably many others, we could do a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin and then translate it down four units. So if I'm starting with A, 90 degrees clockwise would put that one there. This point here was down three over one. So I would do the opposite of that for 90 over three, up one. My 90 degree spot would be right there. There's my side of two. Here I was at three. So three would be up here. I'm just making a 90 degree angle. There's two again. I can start to see the shape here. This was down one over four, so over one up four. And there is my rotation. So I'm gonna call this one A prime. Since they didn't give us vertice labels, we just have the shape. So this would be my image. It's now positioned correctly, so I can finally use a translation. Every point would just need to go down one, two, three, four units to get it into the correct position. So this would be congruent. That is one way to do so. Another way, if you wanted to rotate about this point, we could go rotating it down this way. So it would look like this. I just rotate it about that point. And then from there, I could translate it down one to the right five, and it would be in the same position. So there are multiple ways to do this. And since they didn't give you options to choose from, find a way that works and go with it. Example two. Determine congruence. Are the two figures congruent? If so, describe a sequence of transformations that maps trapezoid EFGH onto trapezoid IJKL. If not, explain why they are not congruent. So let's see if we can get EFGH onto IJKL using some transformations. So first, let's reflect it across the y-axis. So reflecting it over that way, F prime would now be here. E three away, so three away. G was two away. H was one, two, three, four, five away, so two, three, four, five. There is my first image. Now, if I try to translate it up, this top corner would match fine with this corner. This corner would match fine with this corner, so that side would be okay. This one would match up here, but this last bottom corner down here, moving it up four units, would match with over there. So drawing my new second image, it would look like that. It does not match up exactly. If that's the case, and there's nothing you can do just by using rotations, reflections, or translations to make it match up exactly, they are not congruent. So these two figures would not be congruent. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This is not congruent, and there is nothing you can do to get A to map exactly onto B using rotations, reflections, or translations. Hopefully, just by looking at the picture, you could see they are definitely not even close to being the same shape. This one looks like an L. This one maybe looks like an F or part of a T. They're not even close to being the same shape. They are not congruent. Let's learn. Identify transformations. If we are given a pre-image and an image, sometimes you're going to have to figure out what happened to the shape. The order of the vertices on the figure and how it's named can help you to figure out what happened. So for example here, in our original we had A, B, C, D. They are moving around 
in a clockwise direction, alphabetically clockwise. But what happened in our image? It was going alphabetically, but now counterclockwise. When we have congruent figures, we can determine what happened to it simply by analyzing the order of the vertices, as well as using some logic and common sense. Some things to look for for your vertices. For all of these, the length is the same, so that is not really going to affect anything since we're not changing the size of our object. But for translations, the orientation is the same. So the positioning, A is in the same position as A prime. B is in the same position as B prime. C is in the same position as C prime. Nothing about the orientation changed. Everything is the same. It just might be higher or lower or left or right. For a reflection, our orientation is reversed. So when you're thinking about a reflection, so here B is in the same position as B prime, that's not really easy to see if anything happened. But if we look at the base of our triangle here, A and C become C prime and A prime. C was closest to our line of reflection. C prime is still closest to the line of reflection. A was further away. A prime should be further away. But in our order, going around clockwise, if we went B, C, A, now we're going B, A, C. So our order was reversed. Or think about their positioning compared to a possible line of reflection. Could you put a line down the middle where everything would be symmetrical on both sides? For a rotation, the orientation is the same. So it went A, B, C going clockwise, A, B, C going clockwise. However, the positions of our vertices are in different spots. There might be one that's in the same place. If there is, that's your center of rotation. But everything else is just turned. Think about if you were to physically be able to take your hand and move the shape and turn it. How would those letters look now? Example three, identify transformations. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Determine which sequence of transformations maps ABC onto XYZ. First, let's determine any changes in the orientation of the triangles. Here we're using different letters, but if you look at what things would be the same, angle B here would be the same as angle Y. So if we want to call that like B prime, just to make it a little bit easier, our short side connects B with A, so B with A prime. So if that's that, then C prime must be down here. We went B, A, C going counterclockwise. Now we're going B, A, C going clockwise. So our orientation was reversed. When that's the case, at least one is a reflection. So at some point, this was reflected over something, probably over the Y axis. If we reflect that way, B was two units away. Now it's there for B prime. A would be over here and C would be over here. How do we get it into the correct spot? We have to move it down two units. So based on the orientation of our vertices, we could tell that a reflection needed to be used, but and then in order to get it to our correct spot, we still had to translate it down two units. So this transformation was a reflection across the y-axis followed by a translation two units down. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and choose the correct sequence of transformations. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have chose D, that you would reflect our parallelogram and then translate it five units to the right. If we're given a multiple choice type question like this, sometimes it's going to be just as helpful to look at each of the choices and determine which one works. So if I took M, shifted it up four, one, two, three, four, and then to the left four, one, two, three, four, that's over here. That is definitely not getting it to our image, so A would not work. I could check other points up one, two, three, four, but I'm still not going to the same place that I need to go to. For B, if I reflect it across the Y axis, so first I'm going this way, I would end up with that point is in the same spot, three units and three units, one unit, one unit, four to four. So that one at least gets me the same positioning, the same orientation as my image. But then if I reflect it across the x-axis, I'm now up here, that point's there, three and three, that point's there, 
that point is there, and that point is there. So reflecting and then reflecting it again made my final image look like this. It's close, but it is not in the same positioning. For C, rotating it 180 degrees about the origin. So this one, 180. Here, three units, three units, so K would be the same as up there. L, diagonal, four over three up, so four over three up. L would be the same as there. M would be right there. So I can see my first image looks like that. If I translate it two units to the right, it's still not going to position it correctly. It'd be on top of it, but not matched up exactly. So this would not work either. Finally, D, if we reflect it across the x-axis, so up here, 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 and here, there's my reflection across the x-axis, and then translating it five units to the right. So this one, one, two, three, four, five, matches there. One, two, three, four, five, matches there. One, two, three, four, five, matches there, and that one matches there. I end up in the same spot, so D works. So if you're given a multiple choice type problem, you can just check each one to see what works. As soon as something is not matching up correctly, it cannot be the way to show that it's congruent.